As sales of new aircraft at air shows like this are on the rise again, the next generation of cutting-edge, consumer-friendly passenger planes are already under discussion. But we wanted to let you in on what's being talked about behind closed doors by tech heads and geeks. What is in store for passengers like you and me in the year 2050? The elegant Boeing 787, the Dreamliner, made its first international appearance in July, like a debutante at a high society ball. Constructed from carbon fibre and powered by twin Rolls-Royce engines, the Dreamliner's first commercial flight is due to be at the end of this year. Orders for this and the A380 have been surprisingly healthy recently, given the economic climate. Fast Track was on board the A380's debut commercial flight way back in 2007, and now it's a relative regular on the runways of the world. But for these students paying a visit on board the Super Jumbo, the future of aviation has just begun, and they're into blue skies thinking. How would you like the experience of flying to be in, say, 40 years' time? What would you like? As a Christian, um, I would like to fly more easily, to have um, more flexibility in the, in the flights. For example, if I miss one, uh, one aircraft, I can take the next one. Maybe a faster airplane and um, also cleaner, um, because it's a very big problem for the environment. environment. Most of the time, when you're flying in the aircraft, you, are, you know that you have an 8 hours flight or 10 hours flight. You're sitting in one corner, but now you don't want to do that. So just in case if I'm flying from Heathrow to uh, maybe to California, I want to go around, talk to people, enjoy, walk around. Ideally, I would like to the, the airplane to just to come in front of my house. <laughs> if you look at the difference between 40 years ago, 1970 till now, all that, all that happens is the planes are a bit bigger and a bit faster. Why do we think that by 2050 things will have advanced so quickly? For two reasons. First of all, 40 years ago, I think the priority was on speed. It went from the propellers to the jet engine, the Comet, the Caravelle, and then afterwards the Concorde was really the epitome of, uh, you know, Mach 2 uh, going very fast, burning a lot of fuel. I think now we changed the focus. Now we went more over the last 30 years towards efficiency, and now we are going more towards eco-efficiency, which is really trying to learn out of nature. Uh, what we can get in order to make our planes even better. All of the big guns in aircraft manufacturing want to be pioneering the next breakthrough. Like this concept plane devised by Airbus engineers, which they say is more than a flight of pure fantasy. Well, we are talking a lot first about you know, integration of the engines in the, in the wing, a shape of wings with, which can be self-cleaning in order to ensure laminar flow all the time, and of course materials, we are talking uh, composites, but maybe also metal or hybrids, depending on what will be the materials at that time. Sustainability is a given for the industry and halving carbon emissions by 2050 a generally accepted goal, especially with four or five times more planes in the sky by then. But what else should we expect? The first thing to think about is what kind of people will be flying in 2050. The world's population is predicted to rise by 50% in the next 40 years. That's 9 billion of us in total, and more of us wanting to fly. Well, what I think we'll see is that in the emerging economies, in the, in the countries where the birth rate is very high, we're obviously going to have lots and lots of very young people. And their requirements for flying, they'll want excitement, they'll want to go to popular and fashionable destinations. In contrast, in many countries in the West, in the UK for example, we have an ageing demographic. We've got people today who are perhaps, the prediction is they'll live to their 80s, but in reality they'll probably live to 100 or even more. These people will want comfort, they'll need support because some will be disabled, they'll have cognitive difficulties, but they'll want a uh, much more comfortable and leisured approach to flying than perhaps we're used to in, in, in some of today's experiences. The second thing to consider is what technology can offer us in 2050. Every technological discovery inevitably leads to wild, excited prophecies. Some of our previous predictions seem laughable now. Now, I've seen a model of a transparent plane. How possible is that? 
Well, completely transparent looks a bit impossible because you're going to see everything what's inside, even including yourself. But actually, we're looking at some sort of material that could be transparent and then uh, dark. And this, you could use that in the cabin to replace the windows. So not only do you avoid the windows, but you can have a kind of panoramic view depending on what you want to see. These smart materials have got a long, long way to go. The, the chemistry of carbon, carbon nanotubes, graphenes and so on, are going to transform many, many industries. So we can see um, planes that are efficient because they get lighter and lighter, stronger and stronger, and it will lead to designs that are in inconceivable today. We definitely see solar energy in its current state as being a help. We could have some solar cells on the top of the aircraft in order to reduce the need for energy, for fuel, for instance, in order to fly the aircraft. We're looking first at what happens between the home to the aircraft. How could you use some technologies like uh, iPhone, uh, different applications, so that actually each passenger is treated individually rather than trying to queue in all these long lines in security before boarding the aircraft. Do we actually need airports? I think not. I mean, yeah, aircraft have to land and take off on runways or something like a runway. But do we need the hassle of an airport? And then some would say, well, what about all the security issues? Well, if we are partially electronic people already, provided we're happy with the affair, we can let our computer chips acknowledge and enunciate who we are. So the people who are trusted to fly will be able to fly, and anybody who's trying to spoof the system will have to join the physical queue like we have today. Well, those sleek, futuristic visions of flying in 2050 are all very good, but strip away all the mod cons, and quite frankly, give me some more legroom and a stress-free time at the airport, and I'll be happy with that by 2050.